Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we're going to travel back in time to check out a Paris apartment that remained the same from 1939 until 2010. You're going to see some really cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. Marthe de Florian, born Matilda Eloise Bajeron, in 1864 was a French socialite, actress, and, to put it politely, a cultured companion, who was financially supported by her wealthy lovers. She passed away on August 29, 1939, at the age of 74. In her time, Marthe Florian was a muse to many politicians and artists, which positioned her at the center of Parisian high society. One of her most notable relationships was with Georges Clemenceau, a leading French politician and journalist who later became the Prime Minister of France from late 1917 to 1920. She also had romantic liaisons with notable figures like Pierre Waldeck Rousseau, another Prime Minister of France from mid-1899 to 1902. She also hooked up with Paul Dachanel, who was President of France in 1920, as well as Gaston de Margaux, who served as President of France from 1924 until 1931. She also rolled around in the hay with Robert de Montesquieu, who was a poet, painter, art collector, art interpreter, and a bit of a dandy. In fact, he is reputed to have been the inspiration for Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. This fellow wanted to be the most photographed man in history, but her most intriguing romantic relationship was with a master of swish, Giovanni Boldini. In the late 19th century, he was the most fashionable portrait painter in Paris. Now let's check out her apartment. Marthe gained her own level of fame following her death when her apartment, which remained essentially frozen in time since World War II, was revealed to the world in 2010. Her life, much like her apartment, remained a hidden treasure of history until its unveiling shed light on her glamorous and mysterious existence. The 1,500 square foot apartment itself, located on the right bank of the River Seine on the fourth floor of Two Square Le Bruyere in the 9th arrondissement of Paris, near the Opera Garnier, was like a time capsule from the early 20th century, which is pretty cool. Left untouched since the outbreak of World War II, it was filled with antiques, artworks, and personal items that offered a glimpse into the opulent lifestyle of de Florian and the era she lived in. Her apartment was a relic of the golden age of Paris, and it showcased an exquisite example of late 19th to early 20th century interior decoration and her personal style. Although specific details of every item and arrangement were not extensively documented, the discovery of the apartment provides some clues to the opulent and tasteful decoration reflective of her status as a cultured companion and socialite of that era. The apartment was adorned with luxurious furnishing characteristic of the period, plush, upholstered seating, heavy draperies, and ornate wooden furniture with intricate carvings were located throughout the living spaces, offering both comfort and a visual testament to the era's decorative arts. Art played a significant role in the decor, with walls graced by paintings that included a previously unknown portrait of Marthe Florian by Giovanni Boldini, capturing her in a radiant pink muslin evening dress. This artwork was unknown until its discovery, and it was authenticated by a love note from Boldini and confirmed by a 1951 reference. It was painted somewhere between 1900 and 1910. This portrait, along with others, contributed to an atmosphere of refined taste and personal expression. The apartment housed an array of antiques and collectibles, including vases, statuettes, and decorative items. Each piece was a conversation starter, holding stories of past eras and personal significance. Rich textiles and tapestries, abundant in color and texture, adorned the rooms, adding warmth and depth. These complemented the furniture and artworks, contributing to the overall elegance and warmth of the space. Large mirrors, strategically placed to enhance the natural light and opulence of the apartment, alongside ornate lamps and candle holders, provided illumination that highlighted the intricate details of each room, from the texture of the fabrics to the hues of the artworks. Among the opulence, personal items and photographs peppered the space, adding a layer of intimacy and revealing glimpses into Marthe Florian's life and the people she held dear. 
She lived and eventually died in this apartment in 1939 with her son, Henry Bajaran, who was present at her death. When he passed away in May of 1966, the apartment passed on to his daughter, Solange Bajaran. She did not live in that apartment. She fled from the Nazis during World War II and settled in the south of France and she never returned to Paris. And so she left the apartment completely untouched. Now check this out. She paid the rent regularly until her own death in June of 2010 at age 91. And you gotta wonder why. If she'd never planned to return and she didn't have any kids to leave it to, what in the world was that all about? But I guess we should be glad that she did because she preserved the apartment's contents for decades. In fact, the apartment and its contents, particularly the Baldini portrait, which fetched, they say, up to 3 million euros at auction in 2010, captivated the imagination of the public and historians alike, providing a unique window into the past and the lavish lifestyle of one of its most intriguing inhabitants. Marthe Florian's apartment was a capsule of time, preserving the essence of the golden age of Paris through its decorations and furnishings. Each element within her apartment not only reflected the luxurious trends of the time, but also her personal tastes and the rich social and cultural life she led. Now here are some snaps of apartments at that same address, so you can get an idea of the size and layout of the rooms. So what do you think of Marthe Florian's Paris apartment? If you were rolling in dough, would you live in a place like that? You know I would. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because there will be more time travel adventures like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of this channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all of our fellow Earthlings and please don't hurt or eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, brilliant people throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.